Hey guys, um, I'm going to do a quick build video just to kind of show how I wired things up for this uh, Fire 110. Uh, I've been meaning to do this for a while. I uh, haven't been able to get around to it because uh, the ESC that I had on the previous board, um, I think it got wet. It got a little bit of water on it and then it shorted out. Um, so I'm still, uh, I, I just got the new ESC today and I'm, I'm rewiring it up. Um, so let me go ahead and start and I'll show you what I've done so far and uh, walk you through the steps of building this for the Fire 110. Um, so the first thing you want to do is get your motors mounted. Um, I used all four screws, a little bit of Loctite in each one and just mount them um, off each arm. Uh, and then you're going to want to start with your ESC. Um, so if you just put the, the, it comes with some standoffs. So if you just screw the standoffs in from the bottom here, put the screw in through the bottom, put the standoff on, um, then put the ESC over the standoff. Uh, you'll want to uh, tin each of these pads up um, and then you're going to strip your uh, wires down. You don't want to leave them too long. Uh, you might want to leave a little uh, extra wire on each of these motor wires and then tuck it under. Um, that's always good for in the event uh, if you crash or if one of these leads break off for your wire, uh, you can strip it again and resolder it on. If you don't and they're too short, uh, then you're you're kind of left at the mercy of how long these wires are. Um, so the next step is going to be uh, attaching the power wire. Um, so I'm going to use an XT30. Uh, so basically on the bottom of this mini cube uh, ESC. There's two power pads there. So uh, basically I'm just gonna flip the copter up like that, push that down, solder those on. You can do those, you can do that first. Uh, I find it a little bit easier because it's kind of supported um, after the fact. It, it has somewhere to kind of hang and support. Uh, but you can do it e either way, it doesn't matter. You can solder this up, you know, beforehand or not. Um, I did pre tin those. So you basically just have to drop the wires on there and, and you're good. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is <laughs> Uh, hook the uh, flight controller into the ESC um, and this can be tricky sometimes uh, so on this mini cube ESC um, the way I have this oriented you're gonna want your plug coming out the front and what that's gonna do is that's gonna put motor one two three and four so this is gonna put your motors in the correct orientation for beta flight so the plug toward the front of the copter so this is this is the front of my copter plug toward the front facing up um, and then this is the ESC wire that came with that. So what you're going to do is you're going to run that back like this and then your flight controller, wherever you run, however you uh, orient your flight controller, the flight controller will just plug into that. Um, so let me go ahead and do that step, get this, get this uh, set up uh, and then I'll be right back and, I'll sh and then we'll walk through the next step. Okay, so now we have our ESC mounted, uh, put the next set of standoffs up so the flight controller to go, can go on. Um, I have the XT30 wired in. Um, so one thing to note, um, I'll put a link in the description to the um, file for uh, the, the PDF file that, that shows the, the uh, mapping or the layout for this, this particular ESC. Um, there's no print on the board at all that shows you positive, negative, anything. Um, but basically if you have the ESC facing up with the, um, the, the, con uh, ESC connector on top, uh, your, your positive is going to be on the uh, right and your negative is going to be on the left, but just, uh, refer to the diagram cause you don't want to hook that up backwards cause you'll smoke your ESC. Um, so the, uh, the next thing I did was also tagged on, uh, added on, soldered on two, uh, uh, another ground and another lead from the same pads. So I just stack the two um, and then these are going to go up to the flight controller. Um, so let me walk you through the flight controller real quick. Um, I already had this wired up, so I'm not going to desolder it and, and redo it all. Um, but anyways, so on my camera here, what I did was I took this um, TX03 camera and separated pin seven. Uh, there's another video um, I'll put a link to a description and video of how to do that. Um, uh, but basically you separate pin seven and you run the video in and the video out off the transmitter and camera to these two, uh, these particular pins here. And then you have your power to the camera going to these two. Um, 
And this is the this is an F4 um, with OSD built in. I'll put a link to the description for this board as well. So I have this tiny, tiny uh, FR Sky receiver here. And the way you're going to wire this up is um, these three pins right here. So, so if you look where it says F4 plus OSD on the board, so it's opposite of the USB port, um, come one pin in and you're going to have your, your, your ground, your positive, and your signal wire in a row on these pins right there. Um, and then your buzzer works off these pins here. So the outside is your buzzer positive, the inside is your buzzer negative. So just uh, tin those up, wire those together, um, and you should be good to go. Um, the battery leads, I'm, I'll, I'll show that after I get this wired up, but the battery leads are right here. So you have your battery plus and then your battery minus toward the outside. Your ground is uh, always toward the outside, except for on this buzzer pin. Um, so yeah, so that, that's it for the wiring on the, uh, on the, the flight controller. Um, so let me hook that together, get the ESC wires uh, correct. And then I will come back and I'll show you guys the order of the ESC wires because some, sometimes it doesn't match up perfectly. So uh, it can be a little tricky sometimes. Uh, I'll be right back. Thanks. Okay, guys. So I got the uh, flight controller uh, connected to the power. Um, so what I did was I, I tinned the bottom of the flight controller um, and then ran the wires there. So what I can do is I can give this one twist like this and then sit the flight controller down like that. So, so on your flight controller, your plug for the ESC is gonna to be toward the back of the copter and your ESC plug is gonna to be toward the front. And then what I'm gonna do is run this ESC wire just underneath in between and then connect it like this. I can get it in like that. Hey guys, okay, so we got the ESC figured out and wired up. Um, let me show you the wiring the way I did this. Um, so the nice thing is it's basically a one-for-one -one match. Um, so you, you are going to have to take one of the ends, um, remove everything but the ground wire. The ground wire is in the correct spot. Um, so pick, pick the end that's going to the flight controller. So when you get this ESC, the ESC will have a black mark on it. Um, I use that as my ESC end and plug that in there. Don't touch that one. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over like this. So you have one end up and one end down. Um, and then you're just going to run, leave the ground wire. And then what you're going to do is you're going to run wire one from here when it's flipped up to wire one here. So it's going to be one for one with it flipped. So when, then when you flip it over to plug it in, it's going to go like this and they'll be in the correct order. Um, so yeah, so the, the first wire here, the kind of gray wire is going to go to the first pin next to the ground. Skip a pin and then the first pin next to the ground uh, that a wire goes in, that's where your gray wire is going to go. Then you're going to have green, then blue, then yellow. So it should be a one for one match. And then make sure you plug the end with the black mark on it into your ESC. So typically this is what I do. I plug in uh, the ESC wire. And then I take this guy and just kind of roll it up real good. Get some twist in it and then run this underneath like this and then mount, put my uh, flight controller on. Sorry, I got all this other stuff I didn't want to disconnect. Um, and then you're going to flip this over. Make sure your flat end is up on the uh, wire. And you're just going to flip this over and kind of work it, work it around. Um, it's kind of a tight fit. Uh, when you roll it, but it makes for a, a little bit nicer build. Um, and then plug that in and you should be good to go. Um, I, I recommend that before you go past this step, uh, you uh, double check the continuity on your uh, flight controller to make sure you don't have any shorts. Uh, plug in a battery, uh, plug, your, plug this into uh, uh, Betaflight. Uh, go into Betaflight, go to the Motors tab, and then very slowly, uh, I have props on, but you probably won't have props on, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but verify uh, motor direction and verify motor order. So you should have one, two, three, four on your motors. So when you spin up motor one, the flight controller should send a motor one signal to the ESC, which should turn this motor. Uh, so double check that before you move on. If anything's wrong there, uh, review the video, the wiring, uh, what we just talked about, um, and then... 
The next step is basically just the, the reassembly of the frame, putting the frame back together, um, and you should be good to go. Uh, I have a loose wire here I need to redo. Uh, anyways, um, so that's that's pretty much it for the build part of it. Um, I'll show the uh, beta flight configuration next. Uh, so really all that's left here is just putting some nuts on the top of here and assembling the frame. I'm not going to show all that. Uh, it should be uh, pretty self self-explanatory. Uh, but yeah, there we go, um, and I'll move on to the beta flight part next. Thanks, hey guys. Okay, uh, now we're going to configure the uh, beta flight portion of the Fire 110 uh, build. Um, so we're going to start. Uh, plug in your USB cable. Uh, bring up beta flight, um, and go to the setup tab. Uh, go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer. Make sure you're on a level surface. Um, so go ahead and do that. Um, the next thing you want to do is move down to ports. Um, for the board that I wired this to, the serial RX is on UART 1. Um, depending on which flight controller you're using, it might be on UART 3. Uh, but for this particular board that I'm doing this build with, it, it, it is on uh, UART 1. So enable, if you're, if you're following this build specifically, uh, parts and everything, go ahead and enable the um, serial RX on UART 1. Uh, save and reboot. Uh, once you're connected again, go to the configuration tab. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, turn on DSHOT 600. So click the drop down, make sure you're on DSHOT 600. Um, I always leave motor stop off because I want my motors to spin when I arm. Uh, and 4, I found, seems to be, I think the default is 4.5, but uh, in these micros, uh, 4 seems to be a pretty good uh, um, value. Um, so the next thing you want to do is if you're, like I said, if you're following along to this build exactly, um, you're going to have to uh, rotate the uh, the board. So the board, uh, the way I have it oriented is rotated uh, 90 degrees clockwise. Um, so go ahead and set these uh, to CW90. Uh, turn your VBAT on. Uh, the important one is you're going to want to make sure that you've enabled Serial RX on the port tab, and that will allow you to now select Serial Base Receiver and SBUS. Um, since this is an F4 board, uh, you can run 8K, 8K, and it will keep the C the CPU load is very low, uh, so you can run you know a very high uh, gyro and uh, PID loop update frequency. Um, and then the other thing you want to enable here is OSD. Uh, you don't really need any of the other stuff enabled here unless uh, you're, you want to use it for something. Uh, but go ahead and turn on OSD. Uh, you can give it a craft name if you want. And save and reboot. It'll reconnect. Um, and now you want to go to fail safe. Um, so I have different things I do here sometimes. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what I typically do. Uh, so I put throttle on hold um, instead of auto. Um, I turn on the fail safe kill switch since I'm using an FR Sky and I can have more uh, channels. Uh, and then I just set these to both five. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to get, if you're throttled up and you lose connection, instead of it immediately falling out of the sky, you're going to get a, a throttle delay of like 500 milliseconds for it to reconnect. So like half a, like very little um, time. So you're going to get like 0.5, half a second uh, for the controller to, to reconnect to the copter. So it'll just keep, so if you do a punch out and you lose control, it's going to keep punching out for another half a second before it drops to the ground to give your, to give your uh, time to, uh, your transmitter time to reconnect to the copter. Um, so go ahead and turn that on, um, and the rest of these stay the same. Uh, save and reboot. And then uh, just make sure that your fail-safe settings are saved. Uh, now we'll go on to PID tuning. Um, I've done a little bit of stuff here. Uh, I, I've modified these just a tiny bit, I think, uh, from the default settings, or I don't know, maybe they got reset. Let me check. Yeah, these are the default settings. Um, 
No, no. Yeah, these are not the default settings. So if you want to copy my PIDs, um, I put I have a 52 and a 60 here. I left the D values alone, and I up the rates and the super rates a little because uh, I like a little uh, snappier feel. Um, I didn't mess with anything else on here, um, but you can copy these values if you want and try them out and see what you think. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go to the receiver tab. And if you're using a Tyrannus, you want to make sure you change your channel map to uh, TAER1234 if you're using the default. Now, if you've set it to something else, then um, then that should be fine. Uh, the other thing you'll want to do is get your control and make sure that your um, midpoints are all at 1500. So when you put your throttle at its midpoint, it should be at 1500. Um, and then your... your uh, your endpoint should be 1,000 and 2,000, or as cl absolutely close as you can get them to 1,000, 2,000. And the way you can do that is you can go into your uh, Tyrannus settings to your outputs page, um, and you can adjust the sub trim and endpoints there. Uh, just adjust the adjust them up or down or whatever you need to do to get them to uh, 1,000, 2,000 for each of these. Um, and then, so that's it here. Uh, I have a RC and yaw dead band of two. Uh, that's just uh, so I could probably take those off now because I have new gimbals. Um, but if you if your controller is a little bit older, it'll start to get to where there's some stick and you'll see some movement in here. Um, and so if you have the dead band, that'll just get rid of some of that play um, from like older gimbals get where they they don't they don't register the values as well. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is set up modes. Um, you're, once again, you're free to set this up however you want. Um, this is just kind of the way I always do it. Uh, so on my Aux One, um, I have I have my uh, arm switch set up, um, and then on Aux Two, I have my modes. Uh, so I have angle, horizon, and air. I'm getting to the point now where I rarely ever fly in these two modes anymore. So I might be changing this in the future and just always set air mode on. Uh, but for right now, uh, I'll go ahead and set it up like this. So I put these three on aux two, um, and then I set them like this. And then on my aux three, I put a fail safe and a beeper. So my fail safe is if I flick that switch to the middle, it'll fail safe immediately, kill the kill the copter. And if I lose it out in the bushes or something somewhere, I can flick that switch all the way up, and it'll turn my beeper on. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll go down to the motors tab. And without any props on, uh, what you're going to want to do is just test your motors. Um, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do this right now because I have props on. Uh, but you, what you want to do is turn this on, um, and then just spin up each motor. And with, like I said, make sure you take your props off uh, and spin up each motor just a tiny bit. Make sure the motor that's motor one spins, and make sure it's spinning the direction it shows here. So what I typically do is. Um, I typically spin it up to where it's spinning fully, not twitching anymore, and then I just kind of barely rub my finger against it and feel which way it's spinning, because sometimes when it's spinning, it's really hard to tell um, which way it's going. But I just touch my finger barely on it, and you can kind of feel which way it's going. Um, so just verify your motor configuration is correct, um, and that will verify that your ESC wiring is also correct. Uh, the next thing you'll want to do is go here to OSD um, and configure the OSD how you like. Uh, I have my fly mode over here, uh, my voltage in the middle, my fly time uh, to the right, and then I, um, since I fly with these quads, a lot of proximity stuff, um, I do kind of like the crosshair. It, it, if I'm going through something really fast, uh, like a small gap, uh, a lot of times the crosshair will line me up. I can put that crosshair right in the middle of that gap, and I'll go straight through it perfect. Um, so I do use that on, on this one, but nothing else I use. Uh, if you like the... Uh, sidebar or the whatever the craft name to show up up here or wherever you want but um, the way you do this is you can just enable these things so let's say for instance I want to put my craft name on I can click craft name and it'll put it on the screen here and you can see now it's overlaying uh, my voltage but what you can do is you can just grab and drag and drop it wherever you want um, and then make sure to save your changes after you're done with that um, and that is about it for the setup uh, through Betaflight uh, you would be at the point now where you would want to uh, go out and do a good test flight, check the motors, see if they're hot, uh, you know, do any tuning that you know how to do. 
Um, and I will show you something advanced um, that, that you can do that will actually drastically improve the flight of, of this chopper. Uh, and I got this off of Joshua Barbwell's channel. Um, and typically he was doing it with the five inch quads. Um, or the example he did was with a five inch quad in the flight footage he showed, but I've tried this on the minis, these micro quads, I'm sorry, um, and it seems to work on them and it actually works pretty well. Uh, on the Aurora, I had a lot of prop wash, um, even with the good pids, and this basically got rid of all the prop wash whenever I bank around a corner really hard. Um, I would get no vibration whatsoever, and uh, this is what you're gonna look for. Uh, so if you look, do version, uh, make sure make sure that you're on um, three dot. I think it works with three one six or three one seven, um, and then you can type get low pass, um, and what you'll see here is you'll have a D underscore uh, D underscore low pass underscore type, and the default is bi quad. Um, so what you're going to want to do is follow these steps. You're going to want to do set D underscore low pass type equal to PT1, hit enter, save. Now that you've hit save, uh, the copter will reboot. Uh, go out, test, um, fly your copter, just hover it. Don't, don't do a bunch of crazy flying, punch outs, that kind of stuff. Just hover it in place for about 30 seconds to a minute, land it. Uh, feel, your, feel your motors. Um, if your motors are are hot, meaning you can't leave your fingers on them for more than say five to five seconds without them like you having to take your fingers off because it's so hot. They're gonna get warm. Um, okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go into your PID tuning, go to filter settings, and set your gyro notch filter one frequency to zero. Uh, then say, go out, do the exact same process again. Fly your copter around, um, not super aggressive, just maybe hovering, do a couple of flips, something like that. Check it after 30 seconds, fly it again, check it after a minute. If your motors are still cool or warm, but not hot, then you can probably, you're probably safe to leave this on. Um, what you can do then at that point is actually do, do a full flight, do whatever you're gonna do, do your acro, aggressive flying, speed, bring it down, check the motors intermittently. Um, all this, the the D, D uh, low pass type and the this gyro notch filter one is all at your own risk. Um, I don't recommend doing it if you're concerned at all about potentially uh, smoking one of your motors. Um, uh, Joshua Barwell goes into all this too, uh, but every micro I've tried this on, uh, it's worked okay. The motors don't get too hot. Um, but like I said, at your own risk, don't get mad at me if you burn your motors up. Um, but it does make the copter fly better. Um, and I have a Aurora 100 video coming out uh, soon, I'm editing it, where I show the difference in the flight footage between having it on and having it off. And you can see the vibrations go away completely um, when, you, when, you turn these, when you turn these filters off. Um, but anyways, so that's the end of the beta flight setup. Um, and the build video. If you have any questions or you like this video or it helped you out or I missed something I should have covered uh, and you still have questions, uh, post them in the comments below. Uh, like or subscribe the video and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.